breaking drilling has reached 1.2 kilometers into the Earth's mantle. Engineers on the Joides Resolution drilling vessel have managed to extract a record-breaking core from the Earth's mantle. It is 1,286 meters long and comes from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where the Earth's mantle is close to the surface. Analysis of the rock core has provided new information about the evolution of the outermost layers of our planet. Future research may also provide clues to the origins of life on our planet. The Earth's mantle makes up about 70 to 80 percent of the mass of our planet. It lies beneath the Earth's crust, on which we live. Depending on the location, this crust is several to several dozen kilometers thick. Researchers distinguish between the upper mantle and the lower mantle. The upper mantle, which lies just below the crust, is composed mainly of a magnesium-rich rock called peridotite. This layer drives the movement of the tectonic plates, which causes earthquakes and volcanic activity. The lower mantle makes up most of the mass of the mantle. It borders the planet's core, but this layer is poorly understood. Last year, scientists managed to drill into the Earth's mantle to a depth of 1,286 meters. Previous attempts ended at a depth of only about 200 meters. They did this from the Joides Resolution ship. The drill was located on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Until now, we only had access to fragments of the mantle, but there are many places where the mantle is exposed on the seabed, says Johann Lissenberg from Cardiff University in the UK. One such place is a geological formation called Atlantis Massif. It is located near the volcanically active region of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and rises about 4,267 meters from the seabed. Tectonic activity forces mantle material into the crust, from where it can be relatively easily collected. It is the immediate proximity of the Earth's mantle that causes many volcanoes in this area. As seawater seeps deeper into the mantle and interacts with rock material, the high temperatures create hydrocarbons such as methane, which escape back through hydrothermal vents and can be used by a variety of life forms on the seafloor. This process of transforming igneous rocks into serpentine minerals is known as serpentinization. Lissenberg and his colleagues initially planned to drill to a depth of about 200 meters, 650 feet, into the Earth's mantle. We started drilling and it was going amazingly well. We were extracting really long sections of rock and we decided to go as deep as we could, says Andrew McCaig of the University of Leeds in the UK, a member of the research expedition. Ultimately, the team drilled to a depth of 1,268 meters, 4,700 feet, into the Earth's mantle. The researchers were able to recover 71% of the core sample. The sample, like the formation itself, is composed of peridotite, a coarse-grained igneous rock composed almost entirely of olivine and pyroxene. The researchers saw that the core had been metamorphosed, and even the least altered peridotite had been metamorphosed by 40% along the entire length of the sample suggesting that seawater had penetrated much deeper. However, the rest of the sample retained its original composition, providing new information about Earth's mantle. The researchers found that the core contained significantly lower levels of pyroxene than other mantle samples collected from around the world, suggesting that this particular part of the mantle had undergone significant melting in the past. In the future, the researchers hope to reconstruct this process, which could help them better understand how the mantle melts and how this molten rock migrates to the surface and feeds ocean volcanoes. So far, the team has found that instead of moving vertically, the melting materials appear to be moving diagonally toward the surface. 
The region where the drilling was done is dotted with hydrothermal vents. They are a product of the Earth's geological activity. They are often found in volcanically active areas or where tectonic plates are colliding. The vents can reach heights of up to several meters and spew hot, mineral-rich water. Despite the extreme temperatures around hydrothermal vents, scientists have discovered thriving food chains filled with chemosynthetic bacteria, snails, and crabs that draw energy from the nutrient-rich water emerging from the vents. Some scientists believe that life on Earth began in the depths of the ocean, near hydrothermal vents. Microbiologists, by examining chemicals found in the extracted core, hope to determine the conditions that could have led to the emergence of life. As CEO author of the study Marguerite Goddard from the University of Montpellier points out, without light or organic matter, all the energy for life comes from chemical reactions. One of the few sources of energy present at the bottom is hydrogen, which is created as a byproduct of serpentinization. It may have been the primary source of energy for the earliest inhabitants of Earth. The study was published in the journal Science. E